Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about the two methods of hard surface modeling that I do, I take in my workflow. The first one is the traditional subdivision modeling. And the second one is, is what I just picked up um, not a long time ago, but I really like that method is the life boolean uh, dynamesh and finish that up in uh, ZBrush. Well, this video isn't meant to be for absolute beginners because you have to know um, basic steps to take in every method that I'm mentioning. To address the pros and cons of the two, basically you have to understand what the basic uh, in order to be able to understand the methods and the and what is best for for what job. All right. So as you can see here, this is the piece. This is um this is a whip of a uh, hyperly whip of my uh, custom SMG that I'm doing for my character. And I did a block out in my in Maya. I did the the block block the first block out in Maya. Uh, I did that with some simple um, uh, pieces like this one in Maya. Uh, basically, I combined the two methods of doing uh, hard surface into one piece. Since there's a lot of uh, complex shapes. This one is made using uh, live boolean and uh, dynamesh. Most of it was done using uh, ZBrush. So today I'm going to be showing you guys that and basically telling you what what are the advantages and disadvantages of the two so that you can pick which one to use. Okay, so first I will go to uh, Maya got two uh, rows here. The first one, the top one, is uh, meant to be for ZBrush. I'll take these pieces and go into ZBrush to do the high poly. And uh, I already did some of it because it's going to take quite a, uh, quite a long time. So I already um, added some edge loops here. You can see if it's taking too long, I might have to speed the process up. So you guys don't have to uh, wait for that <laughs> to complete. Okay. So this one here is uh, another piece. So as I usually I do combine the two uh, using uh, boolean union, and then it will it will automatically merge the vertices together. There's no uh, gap here. Uh, okay, let me do it real quick. Uh, first, turn on symmetry. I can turn on symmetry. Please turn on symmetry. Okay, it's not symmetrical. Anyway, I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna do this one uh, real quick because I think it's not gonna take that long. So, uh, no need to be symmetrical. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna do it real quick um, because I'm gonna be really messy here because it's not, uh, it's not, you know, like uh, we're not really fussy here. Um, much it up. And then do the target well process. Hey, and then you connect these vertices together. Connect, connect. I usually like to um, set the soft edge and hard edge on the go. Right, and the press three to preview that is not going to turn out good. So um, usually you guys go in and connect. I mean, you insert the edge loop, right? Like that, but I'm not doing that. I my way of doing it is let me check OBS. Oh, it's still recording. I thought I forgot to press record. <laughs> uh, I select all the hard edges. Select all the hard edges. There's a button here that you can press, but I might have to write that that down for you to copy and and save it to your shelf because it's it's really convenient. 
But I just want these hard edges, I don't want a whole object to be selected. I don't want these edges to be selected. So I just do it manually. Yeah. So if you yeah, yeah, so so this is my take. This is my way of doing it. You select all the hard edges, you press control B or bevel, you crank. You kinda crank up the fraction. No, it's is yeah. You kinda crank up the fraction a bit that and then you turn off chamfer all right keep the main edges and then it add the the surrounding edges to, to, to support it and then i kind of like to uh set the, the soft and hard edge again and then you connect these into place i think i'm gonna put it here it's not ideal to uh to connect the two vertices into this vertex because it's gonna if you press 3, it's gonna drag the support edge away from the main edge here, which is not ideal. So, this vertex has 4 edges connected to it, right? So, if you add one more here, it becomes 5. It, it becomes a star. Ideally, you don't want a star to be connected into your um, support edges because, well, it would try to drag the vertex out of place. So this line is not is not straight anymore. So bear in mind that, okay? But if you delete these, it is nearly straight. But well, I'm doing an example, so I'll get away with that. Alright, now let's see. Yeah, we've got the result. Let's see if there's any pinging. We did a good job, I think. That was the um, the traditional subdivision modeling. We call it sub D modeling for short. Right, I'll take these ones into ZBrush and I'll show you the, the process of doing that in ZBrush. Export air. I'm gonna create a folder for this. I'll call it uh, mesh. Yeah, very creative. I'll export as OBJ. I don't want that to include material, so I'm gonna take off material. Right, I'll call it number one. Yeah, another. Right, I'm going to ZBrush now. Import this in. Okay, this dialog pops up. It means that it has some angons, and would you like to triangulate it? I usually mostly pick that one. Um, well, we have a problem. In order to, um, to do the live boolean effectively, we have to crease all the hard edges, like in Maya. Crease all these. Let me do this real quick. Connect. And... Connect. Yeah. No, I think that will solve the problem when important. In order to do the um, life boolean effectively we have to crease all the uh, hard edges and then subdivide that but keep the hard edges creased okay i can go in and do creasing manually in zbrush but i don't want that because it's, it's gonna take so long what i'm gonna do is first i'll select the hard edges right and i'll be detaching those right detaching oh no first you have to if you use this uh this script you have to select first you have to select the object right and you click that uh script and then it, it will turn your selection into edges but not really you have to go to edge mode in order to access it otherwise it's not going to be selected it's just a preview okay then you will be detaching those do this again with this one select the object go uh, click that script or you can go to H mode first and then click the hard edge it will be selected as long as you go to H mode after or before clicking that one and then detach that okay I'll redo the uh, export um, 
and I'll import this into the file okay you have to since you got all the um, the pieces disconnected but it's still in one single mesh actually two then you go into ZBrush you have to by the way this is the custom menu that I got but everything I pressed in here is gonna be available outside you, you just have to find them somewhere in the menu or uh, in top row menu so first I have to um, crease polygroup okay yeah um, creasing will be in yeah you go to geometry crease and then crease polygroup it will automatically crease the um, edges that you got from creasing over here one more thing if you would like to, to see the polygroup in colors like visually you go auto groups or you can click crease body group without auto grouping it right what you want to do is oh where point since you know since i don't want the points to be welding in here i don't think it's the problem let's do that where point okay right so now i got a crease in i have to subdivide those but so um what i do is i turn on dynamic subdivision by pressing d but pressing d pressing d without any subdivision it will ask you to have the uh, dynamic subdiv turn on instead uh you go to geometry i think and then turn the dynamic on and then you turn the smooth division levels up to four i usually use four and I'll go to the modeler brush. I'll select crease. I crease two of these. But it will create pinching, so I'll create the whole. I'll, I'll crease the whole H loop by pressing H loop uh, complete. I think uh, I've got all of them. Yeah. Wait, what? I'll undo and then do that again yeah let me real quick split this out of the uh, the object here because I want to boolean those two together so let me do that real quick I'll split hidden this one goes up and then I'll turn on live boolean you check on the down arrow here click on that it will turn on the operation which means the boolean operation will start from this uh, sub tool down all the way down um okay so the first icon is union which means it will combine the two this one i think is this one is different this difference is that you okay i'll do the difference for you i'll check that okay difference will only take the the, the sub mesh and subtract into the main mesh and the third one is intersection it only take the intersection of the two or whatever inside okay the the, the operation here we want to go for is the the union operation and then we have to make sure all the edges are smooth we don't want you don't want to show polygons here that's why we crank up to four to level four in order to get the smoothness that we want okay after turning on live boolean we did the uh the the operation and choose the right operation that we wanted and then we go down here to boolean and uh sub tool boolean turn on ds because we use dynamic sub diff here we have to turn this on otherwise it will create the mesh without the dynamic sub subdiv which is this one the level zero subdivision or you can apply that and turn it into real subdivision then you will not have to click on this one but with the um, dynamic subdiv I can go back and use the uh, the Z modeler brush to add more freezing but with the real subdivision you cannot do that the z modeler only work 
if you don't have any subdivision we turn on dynamic subdiv and then make boolean mesh it will throw at an, a new U mesh here this is the mesh that got booleans in together and then what we want to do with this is we gonna dynamesh it it's gonna take some time okay now you got you dynamesh it I think I went overboard uh, I'll just undo and and do the small resolution dynamesh yeah well it's not enough I think it's not enough when you see the the wobbling uh, edges here you, you can tell that is not enough resolution you crank that up I think two millions works no, nearly three millions but whatever okay now what you can do is uh, go to deformation here um, polish crisp edges you turn the dot off turn that off yeah and then crank it up this is this is going to be your high poly this smoothness will not go away but let me see how I can fix that I don't know how it how I did to fix the decreasing here I think well let me go back and see what I can do with that I don't want the creasing to be um, that much so I'll just increase those Oh, I think I have to crease these, right? Oopsie, no. Nope. Okay, let me let me let me think. Uncrease, uncrease, uncrease. Let me crease these. All right, we got a problem here, but if it was me, I think I would, I'm gonna tweak the model here. Did some mod, some um. I think I'm gonna bevel this like that and do it again, but I'm not gonna do this here. But well, you got the point. This is the result that we that we got from uh, Boolean ZBrush well if you if you know what you're doing you can um, Boolean the the first the main mesh first not Boolean but let me turn that off you can um, Dynamesh this piece first actually I'll do that okay you go Dynamesh this piece first apply the, uh, the subdivision and dynamesh you see what I mean in a second you want to get the smoothness uh, varied like I'm gonna take this one pull, um, dynamesh it and then polish it uh, polish by crisp edges like that I'll do it 50% like say if 50 resolution is my final I'm gonna I'm gonna only do it like 25 and then when I got the other one boolean in I'm gonna do another 25 so that the final result is smoothed 50% you got what I mean I'm gonna do it again okay so if 
if the sorry i'm gonna crank that up if the res if the final result i want to get is 70 percent i don't know if it's percent or what percentage or what but i'm gonna call it percentage for now if this is the final result that i wanted for this piece for these edges i'm gonna only do it 35 and then I'm gonna boolean in with this one. I'm gonna boolean in with this one. And then I'll dynamash it again. And then I'll do another 35. And then what I got is these edges are smooth 35%, whereas these edges are 70% which is two times stronger you got the point here okay so i'm doing that live boolean mesh yeah i'm gonna do that it will create another u mesh here come on come on come on u mesh where is it okay yeah i got the result i want then i will be Dynamation. Okay. And then I'm gonna do uh another thirty five. Okay, now you see that the these edges in the small part in the smaller part here they are not as strong as these ones right so this is the result that i want this is what i'm gonna take out and decimate it and put it into maya to do the low poly okay all right so i'm gonna get back to maya so actually i'm, I'm gonna dynamic it uh looking Oh, sorry, not Dynamesh, Decimate. And by the way, um, I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of the traditional sub D modeling. The pros are, you got nearly total control over the topology, right? It's easier to fix when needed, of course, because you got the 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 small amount of topology and it's really manageable and the cons of the um the sub d workflow is that there are pretty much some artifacts like some pinching you cannot eliminate you have to deal with those obviously if you do that you're putting a lot of time to plan your model ahead then the pinching will be minimized but pinching is inevitable and the other cons is that you you have to spend a lot of time moving vertices adding adding edge loops it will be tedious it's time consuming right now i'm gonna be taking this and uh and just make that uh, about five percent ten percent yeah and put that into uh put this into uh maya and preview that i think 10 percent is overkill it's still a, a lot so i'm gonna take that down to five excuse me export this one is two oh, okay let me uh Actually, I want to uh, delete these because uh, this is the demonstration and you know, I don't need that. I'm, I'm going to hide it instead. This, this is the high poly. With these examples, it's actually identical. They're actually quite similar. Right. They're actually quite similar. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of ZBrush. 
and then I'm gonna end this video because it's taking too long and I don't want you guys to watch an hour long video it's gone it's not very effective I'm gonna do another part of this now the the pros of ZBrush is almost like um, no pinching whatsoever you will see you will see my point when it gets to this one yeah so whatever you do when you do the um, the subdivision modeling it will be pinching even more with the uh, sphere every round object with the, the, the sphere or the cylinder there will be a lot of pinching happening if you're not careful if you use a very high resolution mesh it will be a lot better when it comes to eliminating the, the pinching but at the same time it will be really hard for you to go in there and add all the support edges because it, it, the mesh is really dense so those examples those three examples i'll cover that in the next video if you guys are up but in this video i'm gonna wrap that up well another pros of zbrush is that it is very real time right when you do the live boolean you can move that in and out maybe i want to subtract this you go and move the object up and down like you manipulate the object in real time you can see that visually right it's super fast and the third pro is that it's really fast this is the demonstration i'll be doing it really slow for you guys to to understand but if i'm doing it it's like three to five times faster than how i usually did it in maya but the the cons are first can be hard to control the individual edges uh, smoothness this is what you have to be careful of so the second one the second point is that like well you have to back it up is there's gonna be a lot of times when customers or or your your art director wants you to change things a bit well maybe he want this to be a little bit lower or he want the smoothness to be stronger or softer whatever you have to keep this file in order to redo that right i think the industry is implementing the zbrush workflow into hard surface a lot now i think it's really cool because i when i pick this one up i like it and i do it a lot in my workflow in my in my in my hard surface modeling so um as you can see I did I did all the parts here in ZBrush, most of it. It turns out really well and the and the um the process is really easy to understand. Okay, I think this video is gonna be quite long, so sorry for that. I didn't plan it to be that long, but well I think those are the tips that I'm I'm showing you guys. I think those will be helpful, I hope. If you guys like it, please like the video or if you have anything to add or anything to say, please leave it in the comment below. I'll be answering them. Thank you and have a good one.